Welcome back Troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. I hope you guys are ready to get spooked. It's a paranormal unboxing. Well, paranormal squires anyways. Nothing too scary here, but I picked up three more of these that I did on pre-orders. And in case you missed my previous videos about this series, in 2020, Fender released a new limited edition lineup under their Squire brand name. There are basically two different categories with this. There were the grungy, nighty alternative guitars like the Cyclone, Supersonic, and Toronado. And then you also had the Tele Division, which was the Thin Line Cabernita, the Offset Tele, which I reviewed, and the Baritone Cabernita which I also reviewed. And then there's just one bass called the 54 Jazz Bass. So here's the last three that I'm going to cover on this channel, just kind of as like a conglomeration episode here. And I ordered these back from a Melody Music Shop and it kind of took a while for these things to come in. I think I did those other reviews like two, three months ago. So let's see what is in our first one here. Judging by the size of the box, I bet you can guess that it just might be that bass guitar. So let's go ahead and uh, get this thing out. Oh, we got that like hamburger style packaging at the top again. Squire Jazz Bass. Interesting. I was not expecting that. This is a really chunky bass. Like it's very heavy. I was expecting it to be a little bit lighter in weight. Oh nice, I even got some figuring within that maple neck. That's cool. I was not expecting this whole stacked knob system. So I'm curious if that's independent volume and tones for each. That's kind of cool. Let's go ahead and check out the other two that I got here. See if they're a little bit more my style. I, was, I actually thought about canceling the base order because that's the only one that somebody didn't actually pre-order through my new Guitar Day program. So if you are interested in a slightly used and unboxed on the show example, that one will be available on my Reverb shop. Let's go ahead and see what is in this slightly smaller box here. Looks like a very similar pack job on this one as well. I think I know which one this one is now. I believe this will be our Cyclone. Which, it appears a lot of people were like really excited about those grungy type ones, but in my opinion, I'm not really as excited about them. Well, there she is. You know, this actually looks a lot better in person. I was not expecting this pick guard. You know, shell pink, it's kind of a, a weird color, <laughs> maybe not my first choice, but it's really that yellowed pick guard that makes this thing work. I was kind of expecting a pure white pick guard, but this almost looks like it has a little bit of age to it. You get a little bit of dancing within the maple neck on this one, nothing too crazy. Interesting, so you've got like a duo Sonic Mustang type body, except for this time you have like three Stratocaster style pickups. And then what I'm assuming are on and off switches for each pickup. So you can actually have all three pickups on if you want to, unlike most Stratocasters. So that's kind of interesting. This one actually looks like it also has a trem system on it too. That's a little bit quirky. I like that. Because you also got the comfort cut back here. And you got a little bit of an arm contour right there. So they really did mix those with a Stratocaster. And then there was this one. This is the one that I'm most excited to do. I kind of wanted to do a uh, separate review and demo on it, but I think instead I'll just make this like the main focus piece for this particular review and demo. But you know, it's kind of curious how this one did not come double boxed like all the other ones. So I hope it uh, arrives okay. Yeah. It's a lot more rare than people think to receive a damaged guitar, as long as they're packed properly like this. What is our final paranormal one? The last one that we will see on this channel. There it is. The Squire Telecaster. Yep, I like this. This is a nice one. Very dirty, but <laughs> we can clean that up. Besides the ones that I've already reviewed, it's this Thin Line Cabernita that I've been most excited about because they kind of mixed a uh, Thin Line Telecaster with a Jazz Master in this aspect because you get the little Jazz Master pickups. And usually the Squire Jazz Master pups, they're not half bad. Whoa, what happened there? Uh-oh. Well, that was strange. <laughs> it was like screwed on crooked. Thankfully, it's not actually broken and it came back in place. 
But as far as first impressions on this one, really lightweight and I like that. Not necessarily in love with the neck profile on this. It's very similar to that same one that we had on the offset Telecaster. But at the same time, from my experience with that one, you kind of adapt and get used to it. It's just a really flat feeling neck on the back. I mean, it's still rounded, but very skinny. But I'll be interested to hear the semi-hollow capabilities with these Jazzmaster style pickups. So let's go ahead and throw these paranormal guitars on the workbench here real quick. Starting things off here with the Cyclone. So it's a poplar body with a maple neck and a laurel fretboard. So pretty standard stuff. And yes, indeed, the body comes from a Mustang. You've got the Stratocaster style pickups as well as the synchronized tremolo. But this little doohickey right here actually comes from the Jaguar. So this was actually a blending of three different models, but the thing I was most curious is, can you modify this into anything you want? Obviously you'd have to replace the pick guard. And the answer is yes. It's just a giant swimming pool route in here. You could probably even get away with installing a Stratocaster style switch right there. Maybe you might have to mount it sideways or definitely a Les Paul style switch. So you got a lot of opportunities there. I mean, this will fit pretty much whatever you want, but it looks like a QC8, something like that. You can see like a very small splinter in the wood. Maybe that's actually just the paint peeling off. Not a huge deal, but it is there. You also have to keep in mind, this is $399 brand new but we just have standard Alnico style pickups. They are labeled neck, middle, and bridge. That's actually pretty nice to see. This actually has braided wiring. It's not as nice as like the custom shop stuff, but you know, they're at least trying. And as far as the controls, master volume, master tone, output jack on the front, and it just looks like your basic standard cheapy pots. But hey, at least they're full size. As far as the controls go, it's the opposite of what I would have expected. I would have thought this way would be on, but no, it's the opposite. So towards you is actually on. So your neck pickup reads 5.62k ohms, just your middle 5.87, and then just your bridge here, a little bit hotter, 6.19. So then you can also get the combination of like these two, that's 305, just your neck and middle, looks like a little bit less than that. And all three of them at the same time, you get about two. So lots of different pickup combinations are possible on this guitar. But once again, my favorite thing has to be this kind of off-white mother of toilet seat pick guard mixed with this shell pink finish. It, it, it just kind of grows on you. It's quirky enough that I like it. And once again, synchronized tremolo system with individual saddles here. The spec sheet calls this a nine and a half inch radius with 22 vintage tall frets. I think this fretboard looks pretty good for Indian Laurel. And your truss rods in here, single string tree and Squire Cyclone. Moving on to the back, now it makes sense why it has one of those things. So I had somebody ask me if I could start putting a magnet to the back of these blocks, because apparently zinc ones aren't as good. And yeah, this one is not magnetic at all. So that tells you, might not be the highest quality block ever, but it's a decent size. But take a look at this back plate. It's like oddly squared off. Like for some reason, it just reminds me of Hello Kitty, like a big fluffy white cloud. The Stratocaster versions aren't quite as rounded off looking, or maybe it's just because it's weird that it's on this body style. <laughs> but anyways, Squire bolt-on maple neck here, and these are crafted in China. This is a 2020 year model. This one weighs seven pounds, 10.9 ounces. Let's go ahead and check out the base. Inside the 54 Jazz Bass, I've got to say this one's actually kind of disappointed me as far as quality and just, you know, the overall value for the money, because these are also $400 brand new. Besides the neck pocket crack, I mean, that's not really anyone's fault except for the shipping company, but you also have some fret sprouting occurring. I mean, it's not crazily bad, but you can definitely feel where it's trying to come through that poly finish. But the coolest spec about this is that they're actually a poplar body, but they're using an ash veneer on the top and the back. That way you can still see through to a wood grain. But this is another reason why I'm kind of sad because you can choose between a white blonde finish, which looks great in the Fender stock photos because you can see through to that ash, but this just looks like a, a gray base. I'm not seeing any of that beautiful wood grain that I was hoping for. I think on this one, you're better off going with the butterscotch blonde finish instead of the white blonde because in person, yeah, this one did not really impress me. Maybe somebody forgot to put the top veneer on this one. <laughs> But inside the control cavity, I think you can just barely see that slight veneer right there. And then if we were able to get to the back, you would see the same thing. But here's our control cavity. And that is indeed what this turned out to be. So you've got your volume and tone controls for each individual pickup just stacked up on each other right there. That's kind of cool. I like that. 
Keeps everything clear and concise. And apparently, this isn't going for the T bass thing. This is actually going for the jazz bass with the pickups, but a 1954 P bass. That's why it's called the 54 jazz bass. Because apparently they were like slab bodies in that year. I don't know too much about Fender bass history. But moving on to the back, you can see you've got the contour, but no additional stuff. I guess the best part about this one has to be that little flame patch in the neck. So I guess I'll keep it around anyways. Because Melody Music Shop did cut me a pretty good deal since I bought like so many of these things. But it looks like our bridge pickup reads about 5.77k ohms. And then your neck, about the same, 5.7ish. And if you have them both on together all the way, it's about half that, 2.92. Something else I'm not really liking about this whole setup is... This knob, it moves. These ones are secure, but that just feels a little bit loose. Maybe they could have tightened that up a bit. And this one weighs nine pounds, 7.9 ounces. Let's go ahead and check out the last Telecaster. Really excited to look at this one. So it's mixed both a Jazz Master with the pickups, a Thin Line Telecaster, and a Cabernita Telecaster with its whole layout design and pick card choice. So this is another blending of three. So anything with Jazz Master pickups, I love. I love a good, true vintage 65 Jazz Master pickup in here. Now, we don't have that, but we do have the closest thing that Squire has to them. They're just an Alnico pickup. But you can see, very similar in style. It would be well worth the money to upgrade one of these things, I think. But essentially, what they've done is they've chambered out this body. They've given it an F hole. You get a little channel route that just runs there for the wires to come through. And you have a master volume, master tone with a three-way toggle switch. And this one's actually a string through body with six individual saddles. And it does not look like you have the option to top load at all. So string through only on this one. As far as pickup readings on this one, 8.45k ohms in the bridge. Our neck position, a little bit less hot, 7.96. And in the middle together, what, around 4-ish? Yeah, 4.24. Moving on from our poplar body, it's just a complete maple neck here. Once again, with 22 narrow, tall frets. This one, I'm not really noticing any of that fret sprout stuff. So it seems to be a common issue with these guitars. So I guess check out the one that you're buying in store first, maybe. I mean, even the ones that do have it, it's not bad at all. It's nothing that you have to really take care of right away. It's just, you know, something that's a talking point for me. But Fender calls this a C-shaped neck profile. Let's go ahead and grab our dimensions here. 1.63 inches at the nut width. And by the 12th fret, it looks like 1.98. With the first fret neck depth of 0.8. And by the 12th, 0.87. This one has a synthetic bone nut. You've got your truss rod in there. Squire by Fender Telecaster right there. And you get your vintage style tuners on these guys. The ones that go down and then wrap around. I personally like those for documenting purposes. Easy to take the strings off and get them back on there. But these pickups were a real pain in the butt. That's why I only took one out. Because you've got springs and you've got foam blocks underneath that. But you have to make sure you get your screws within the springs so you can adjust the height. So good quality stuff there. So far the only defect I'm really seeing on this one is the tuners. They just don't feel that good and they've got a little bit of a wobble to them and i don't think it's necessary that these tuners are bad it's just they're not as high quality as what i'm used to i mean you can actually hear them rattle when you really strum this thing but i'm sure that wouldn't actually be a problem if you weren't being a madman just going ba 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 but switching over to the back side, I guess we do have a control cavity back here since we don't have any top routing. That's something else that I personally like about this model. This one appears to be rocking the tiny pots though. So it's kind of strange how they switch back and forth between full size, small, but that is just a chambered out little cavity pretty much like just right here. And then you've got that on the other side, which is where the F hole lies. So it's actually a really nicely specced out guitar. I like that it's the string through design too. Same bolt on neck, just like the other ones. You've got your skunk stripe running down here. And once again, made in China. This was by far the dirtiest guitar stock out of the box. Look at what I was able to shake out of the inside control cavity. When I was shaking it, I could hear a bunch of stuff still in there. So I decided to open that back up and yeah, that's what fell out. This thing's a great weight though, pretty much exactly at six pounds. And if you don't like this white finish, you can actually get a Fiesta red one too. That one has the cream colored pickups. Honestly, I think they both look great. So let's go ahead, plug these things in and get some brief sound samples.
Now that we know a little bit more about these Squire models, what are my final thoughts on these things? I'm not really going to say anything about the base because I didn't really have time to sit down with it too much today. And to be honest, this one, it really doesn't quite speak to me as much. We had a few things that we discussed on the bench that could have been done better. But I mean, as far as a base goes, it is a nice base. You've got the multiple controls. I thought it sounded okay, but I was running it through my guitar amp, so I didn't really want to hammer into it too much. So all those tone demos were like on a volume one, and then I just boosted it in post. So if you're looking for a more in-depth review on this one. Yeah, my channel's not the best place for that at this point in time. But here's a nice look at that little flamey part within the neck. But it's just a real shame that we cannot actually see that ash wood grain through the top like I was hoping for. The Cyclone, it kind of grows on you if you're looking for that kind of stratty, quacky stuff. But ultimately, I would not ever consider owning one of these simply because of the switching system. I hate it. I wish it would have had a more traditional like five-way toggle switch because I don't like having to be able to choose. I would much rather have, I think they call it the S1 system where you have a five-way switch. And then you can pull up on a knob or something to get just the middle pickup or, or to get all three by itself. But I get it. These kind of have a 90s aesthetic to them. So if you like being able to get a bunch of different quacky tones, I would suggest checking one of these things out, just maybe not the guitar for me personally. It's very chunky and heavy feeling, so it's a substantial feeling guitar. But now let's switch over to my favorite.
The Thin Line Cabernita. I think this one has to be my second favorite from the series. The only thing I'm going to really question about this one is, is it too light? At, at six pounds, this kind of starts to feel like a toy, but at the same time, the strings on this one are so ridiculously slinky feeling, even tuned all the way up to standard. So out of the three that I demoed today, this is definitely the clear winner. But out of all five of them that I've reviewed, I think it goes the Baritone Cabernita because it's something just completely unique and different. And then I would switch over to the Thin Line Cabernita because I think this is the best all around guitar from the series. And then after that, I would go the Offset Tele. I'm just not a big Offset Tele fan, but that one was a good guitar. And then I would put kind of the 90s grunge eras below those. They're not really my style, but they're still decent guitars. I have not tried the Toronado, but I am betting that I would like that. So my ultimate recommendations from the Squire Paranormal has to go to the Thin Line Tele as well as the Baritone. So I hope your chocolate nights enjoyed getting to look at this series with me today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.